All right, guys, today we'll be doing a live Q&A um, where you guys can go ahead and go into the comments. And if you guys have any questions, just put them there. And then I will uh, do my best to answer any questions that you guys throw my way. Um, we had a few people that reached out yesterday and provided uh, some, some questions to get started with uh, while we wait for others to roll in. So I'm going to pull that, pull that up. Um, so for those that don't know me, my name is Ben. I'm a physical therapist. Uh, I have own a practice called Prokinetics Physical Therapy and Performance. We're located in Uptown Oakland, California, and uh, we specialize in helping people that are active uh, but are having some pain with squatting, deadlifting, rock climbing, uh, hiking. You know, you name it. Uh, we, if, if you guys are trying, if you guys are being active and want to get back to that, uh, that's who we we specialize in working with. So. Um, we'll get started with the, the questions. And again, if you have questions, go ahead and put those in the comments. Uh, so question that somebody sent in last night was I have cracking or popping that's occurring in my shoulder joint. Is this something to be concerned about? So this goes not just only for shoulder joints, but joints in general, uh, whether it's the knee, um, whether it's the low back, whether it's your ankle, um, this is a blanket statement for those too. So we have three different reasons or three different causes uh, of popping or clicking. That popping or clicking could be coming from one, the when we don't move our joints for a while, if we've been sitting for a long period of time or when we wake up, um, we may feel the need like pop or neck, crack our neck or pop our shoulder when we move it, it might pop. All that is is uh, there's gas bubbles that get built up in the joints. And then when we move them in certain directions, it can release that gas bubble and cause a popping or clicking uh, noise or sound. It's harmless, You're not, it's not doing any damage to your joints. Uh, it's not causing arthritis. This doesn't put you at an increased risk for arthritis down the road or anything like that. So doesn't if there's no pain associated with it, nothing to be worried about. Um, the other second cause can be that there might be a tight muscle, okay? That's overlapping the joint. And when we move through that uh, different range of motion, there can be popping or snapping of a muscle over that joint, right? Again, if it's not painful, it's nothing to be worried about. But if it is caused by that tight muscle, I would make sure that I'm, whatever that muscle is, I'm trying to loosen it up because if we have imbalances and tightness, more tightness in one area versus the other, and there's some weakness imbalances too, then it can put us at an increased risk for injury. So I would try to address it and loosen up that muscle, uh, whatever muscle that is, that's snapping and rolling over the shoulder joint. But again, nothing to be worried about or concerned. Um, and then the third reason is, uh, it, and this is one that you want to be kind of worried about or uh, pay attention to and see somebody, uh, it can be that if there's arthritic changes that are going on. All right? It can be like the creaking grinding. Okay, It can sound like bone. it's bone on bone. And that's where we usually get the pain associated with it. So um, I would go ahead and make sure you reach out to somebody if you're having pain with that popping or clicking sound. Uh, so I'm going to kind of explain how um, what what you can actually do if you have arthritis or there's like grinding in there and it's painful, and how even though arthritis can't be reversed, it can be you can get decreased pain associated with it. And this is another question I get is you know I have arthritis. How can I fix, uh, since it's not curable or uh, reversible, how can I get pain relief without getting a knee replacement, shoulder replacement, or something like that? So I'm going to kind of take some time to explain that. So I'm going to set this up here and then so you guys can see my movements here. So i kind of explain this in a sense that for with regards to knee arthritis. Okay? So... If we have, so a lot of times I have people that come in to see me that want to, uh, that are having knee pain and it's due to arthritis and they're coming in, they're planning to do surgery, but they want to go in stronger surgery. So they come and see me and uh, they have no hopes of trying to get out of pain. They just want to get stronger for the surgery. However, my goal is to get that so they don't even need surgery. Okay. Even though that's not their goal, it's just their belief that they can't they can't get that pain relief, but I need to show them. And so one way that we can actually get pain relief from, even if we have arthritis, which isn't reversible, is changing the, bi the biomechanics of that joint. Get them working like they're supposed to. 
For example, going up and down stairs is usually painful for people that have arthritis or arthritic changes. And this isn't just in the elderly or the older, older population. I work with a lot of athletes that are like 35, 30, 35, 40, and they're already having arthritic changes occurring in their joints, whether that's the big toe, the knee, uh, neck, shoulder, because they've just been overusing it for so, so, such a long period of time. So we're going to talk about the knee. So a lot of times when these people that come in that are having this knee pain from arthritic changes, I have them do a squat and watch how they move. And so what a lot of times I see is they squat like this, all right? And some of you that might not, that might not even have um, arthritic changes may squat like this and have pain with it. Just because you have pain when you squat like this doesn't mean you have arthritis. It can be a lot of other issues that are going on too. But you can imagine that if I'm squatting like this versus like this, it can, though this is the way that I'm supposed, you should be squatting, okay? Keep those knees out, okay? We shouldn't have those knees collapsing in. You can, it, you can redistribute that pressure quite significantly around that knee joint. You can imagine if I'm squatting like this, there's a lot of pressure that's being placed on the outside of the joint, okay? And if that's where the arthritic changes are, there's gonna be a lot of pain associated with it. So if I can get them to move like they're supposed to and strengthen up the right muscles, so they're squatting like this, it takes a lot of pressure off that arthritic changes that are occurring on this outer side of the knee. Then they don't have pain going up and downstairs. So you're like, well, how do you fix that? How do you make it so they move properly? And a lot of times it's, it's re-educating the brain on how to move, one. And then number two, fixing weaknesses, all right? And so a lot of times this is because of weakness coming from the hips or the feet, okay? Yes, the feet. A lot of times the knee isn't responsible for the pain that's, that's having. It's usually coming above or below the joint, but a lot of people get stuck on just looking at the knee joint. So if my glutes are weak, the muscle that's responsible for kicking out like this or pre preventing the knees from collapsing in here, if that's weak, this is the result. We're going to get those knees collapsing in. So if we can strengthen up those glutes and get that to pull the leg out, like the knee out like it's supposed to, then we track properly. Then people get out of pain and a lot of times don't even need surgery. And if they, if they adhere to this training, training program that I give them, and and whatnot so even if you're not even if it's not arthritic change and you're having pain with squats a lot of times it's because of the biomechanics of the the lower body okay so that's kind of my soapbox on that topic hopefully all that makes sense and again if none of this makes sense just uh put in the comments um if you have questions about it and i'm happy to answer those so we'll pull back on here and again, if you guys have questions, go ahead and put those in the comments. Um, another question that I get a lot is, let's see what, oh, there's another question, a couple of few, few other questions that people sent in last night. Oh, okay. So um, this goes back to a conversation I had with somebody yesterday that was having, that was having pain and said that they um, have flat feet and they are knock kneed okay the kind of the same thing that i was just uh demonstrating over there where the knees were collapsing in and uh i told him uh you know there's there's certain things that you can definitely do like that's all reversible you can reverse knock knee you can improve your arch it's not just because you have flat feet that doesn't mean you're always going to have flat feet you can actually strengthen up the foot um anyway she's like yeah i think i just probably just need to stretch and uh do more stretching and mobilization and i should be okay and this is a very, very common thinking um, amongst the general population that if I that you can just stretch and mobilize your way out of pain, is that going to make it feel better? A lot of times, yes. The, if we stretch and we mobilize, it is going to make it feel better. But it's like if you go get a massage. Don't don't get me wrong. Massage is a is great. It's awesome, and I have a lot of patients that um, I refer to get massages. Um, as well but it's like if you go get a massage you feel great for like the next 12 24 maybe 48 hours afterwards and then if you were having pain or tightness before you went in a lot of times that just goes back eventually within 48 hours all right and the reason for that same thing with stretching you know the only thing massage is loosening up muscles stretching is loosening up muscles if you don't treat the root the root issue of what's causing that tightness then it's just going to keep coming back all right so yes, a lot of times when a patient first comes in, I give them a lot of stretching and mobilizations on the first one to two sessions to get them out of that pain and feeling better, but that's not going to be treating the root issue. And a lot of my patients come in after the first sessions like, 
So I give them like five or six exercises to be worked on. And, and they're like, am I going to have to be doing this exercise the rest of my life? I'm like, well, it depends. You know, if you don't treat the root issue of it, yes, you're going to have to keep doing these stretches and mobilizations every single day. Yeah. For the rest, of, most likely for the rest of your life, um, unless some things start changing. Okay. But I tell them if you get to the root issue and address it, no, you will not have to be doing these stretches and mobilizations. So a lot of people that have the fixed mindset that they're just going to stretch and mobilize their way out of pain temporarily. Yes, you you probably can, um, but it's not a long term solution. So they're like, OK, well, what is a long term solution? How do I get out of this pain? And so it all goes back to strength. All right. Our joints want stability. If it's not if the joints aren't getting stability, then there these other muscles are going to compensate for for that weakness. And this is how we get tight muscles, and then the tight muscles cause pain, right? So if we just stretch it, yes, it's going to loosen up those muscles and give us pain relief. But what is causing that muscle tightness that's causing the pain? And it's usually weakness, okay? So, for example, I'm going to go back to, since we've already used the example a little bit, I'm going to go back to the squatting position and how that plays a factor into things if we have the weakness. So, we got, yeah, you guys can you guys should be able to see me there. Let me move this just a tad bit. Okay, so we have an IT band, okay? That IT band attaches from here, side of the hip, and goes down to the side of the knee, all right? And so um, IT, band can, IT band tightness can cause pain, especially kind of that detachment of the outside of the, the knee. And uh, this is especially seen with uh, runners, okay? People that run a lot. Uh, the, a lot of times that it's actually called runner's knee is where the IT band gets irritated and inflamed and causes pain. So a lot of times people also get pain after they do squats incorrectly for a while too. Um, so the IT band, like I said, we always got to think about where it attaches the inserts at. So this plays a factor in the, to the background knowledge of here. So here to here is where it attaches. So if I am going into that squatting position and my knees are collapsing in like this, I'm exaggerating. Most people don't have it this bad, but you'd be surprised. Some do. Um, but for visual purposes, if I'm squatting and I have my knees collapsed in like this, okay, with squatting, I'm only I'm only putting about 50% on each leg, right, to balance it out. When we run, we land with three to five times our body weight on one leg, okay. So I know darn well if somebody comes in and is having this collapsing in when they do a squat and they run. I know darn well they're doing the exact same thing, maybe even worse when they're running. Okay, so when they're running and now this knee is collapsing in like this. Okay, now because of the attachment of where the IT band's at from here to here, it stretches that IT band every time we take a step when we're running, or every time we go to sit down in a chair, or every time we go do a squat or workout, do lunges. Right, I see this a lot too. Lunges, knees collapsing in. Right, it's stretching the IT band and it gets irritated. All right, so a lot of times people that have this IT band pain tell me that they oh they've been doing the the stretching for the IT band they've been rolling it out it feels better for a little bit and then it comes back. That's exactly right because that's all you're doing is stretching. You're you're stretching that tight IT band, loosening up, making it feel better, and getting in the tension that it needs to be. But if we just went and strengthen up the glute muscles like we're supposed to and have adequate strength there, then we don't get these knees collapsing in whenever we do squats, whenever we do lunges, whenever we run. We don't have that knee collapsing in. So that's treating the root issue is getting figuring out where these weaknesses are coming. It's not always just a, the glute either. It can be coming from your foot, right? So if my foot is weak or I have a flat foot and every time I take a step, my foot collapses in, my knee's going to follow. Like watch what happens when I tilt my roll my foot in okay or promote a flat flatter foot that knee follows as well so you can see a lot of these issues come above and below that that joint of the knee right so we don't want to just stretch our way out of pain we want to fix the root issue and that's what we do at prognosis physical therapy and performance is get to the root cause of these issues these stretching and mobilization sometimes are just a band-aid right um, so hopefully that makes sense. And that IT band, that principle of the IT band getting tight, right? And our movement that I just demonstrated here, this can be applied to any other joint, okay? Our shoulder, our low back, you know, our hips, our ankles, all those joints want stability, 
All right. And so if there's, if they're not getting that stability that they need, there's other muscles that are going to tighten up and to support that joint and get tight and cause pain. All right. So we just need to take that same principle with IT band and apply it to other joints too, where we, we strengthen rather than mobilize and stretch. All right. So hopefully that makes sense too. All right. So if that doesn't make sense, again, just go in the comments. I'm happy to answer any of those questions. All right, let's see if there's any other questions that you guys have here. This is not here. Okay, or... so another question that we get a lot, I think it was actually two days ago we got this question. It was, again, yeah, about flat feet. All right, so we talked about, I told somebody that flat feet's fixable, and they're like, really? I'm like, I'm like yeah, it's totally, it's, in most cases, it's fixable. Uh, it depends. It depends on if it's a skeletal system or if it's a muscular system that's causing the flat feet. So we're going to use this model. It's the best model I've got. Okay. So we're going to say this is a heel and then this is the big toe. Okay. And then this we have is our, our arch. Okay. We should have a decent arch. Okay. However, if we don't have the arch, guess what happens? We flatten out like this. Okay. All right. And so, the plantar fascia on the bottom of our foot can get repeatedly stretched. Okay, it becomes irritated just like the IT band. So that's how people get plantar fascia, plantar fascia guys. And it feels better when they roll it out and it feels better when they stretch it, but it just eventually tightens back up because if we don't strengthen that foot, then that arch is gonna keep going where it's being collapsed down, all right? So what I do to determine if it's fixable is I have them lay, lay down on the treatment table and I look at their arches when they're non-weight bearing, right? They're laying down. There's no weight being put through that foot. And if I look at their foot and I see a good arch, okay, that tells me that the skeletal system is, is fine. You actually do, in the skeletal system-wise, you have a good arch. Then what I do is I have them stand up and put weight through it, through standing up. And if I see that foot, now it's collapsed, that tells me, that is a muscular system, not an issue, not a skeletal system issue. Okay. And in those cases, it's totally fixable. All right. We just got to get the muscles to strengthen up like they're supposed and doing the work that they're supposed to be doing to provide that support for that skeletal system. All right. The cases where it's not reversible um, or as you don't see a dramatic improvement is when I, if I laid them down on the treatment table, and they already had the flat, flatter foot. Okay, that tells me that that's just how their skeletal system is. That's just how their body is. All right, strengthening up can help with that for sure, but they're not going to see as dramatic improvements um, as somebody that when they laid down they had a good arch, and it was just when they went to stand that their arch collapsed. If that makes sense. All right. Um, and then with regards to like flat feet and stuff like that, uh, a lot of, I see a lot of people wearing orthotics and using orthotics. I, I go back and forth with orthotics and uh, whether somebody should be using them or not. Uh, it depends on the, the case, uh, case by case basis, but in general, no. All right. The only time I ever have somebody wear an orthotic is if they have the complete flat foot and it's, it's due to the skeletal system. And that especially if, or if they're just having pain with running, okay, I'll tell them, okay, go ahead and wear it with running if they have that extremely flat foot. But, you know, orthotics are just essentially a different version of a brace. They're providing the support from the foot, for the foot, and doing the work of what the muscle should be doing. If we have a brace, if we're using a brace, just, it just reinforces bad movement patterns, right? It makes the foot even lazier because that weak foot now doesn't even have to do as much work as it was before because now the orthotic is helping. So it actually makes your foot even weaker Okay, and you get reliant on that orthotic. Okay? So we want to ideally wean ourselves off of using orthotic in a smart and safe way. We don't want to just quit cold turkey. Otherwise, we don't have enough time for that foot to adapt and build up the strength that it needs for that foot. Okay? So we need to slow. If you are wearing orthotics, you need to find somebody that can help you wean those, wean, wean you off of those, and give you a good strength, um, foot strengthening routine. Um, that's tailored to you and where your strength is at. Um, that's another thing I see a lot is people um, just going on and find it like searching 
I want when we started live, you just go on YouTube and search uh, best foot strength exercises. Okay. There's no one best foot strength exercise. It needs to be tailored to you. There's different levels to this. Okay. It's not like all exercises are at the same level. All right. Some exercise that you find on YouTube for some people might be too hard for them. And that the same, same exact exercise might be too low of a dose for the next person. All right. You have to find some, you have to get in a detailed assessment done of your body to figure out where your strengths and weaknesses are. And if you do have strengths or weaknesses, how weak are those weaknesses and figure and tailoring exercises to a level that's appropriate for your strength level. Okay. All right. So we need to establish a good foundation. Okay. With lower level exercises. And then from there, you need to give your time to make improvements with those build up strength. And then you go up to the next level Then you go up to the next level. Okay. And higher and higher. All right. Because a lot of time, yeah, well, one foot strength and exercise is actually doing um, high skipping. Okay. But that's at the time that, that that's a kind of a higher level exercise. If I gave that to somebody that had um, plantar fasciitis or having foot pain, guess what? That would make it actually the problem actually worse because they didn't establish that good foundation, establish that good foundational strength first. Okay. But if somebody came in there, they had a pretty good strong foot and they just went on YouTube and found foot strength exercises that were um, non weight bearing or they weren't, they weren't difficult enough. It's not going to make any changes to the body. So that's why it's important to get a detailed assessment done to figure and get exercises that are tailored towards your strength level and whatnot. Okay, so hopefully that makes sense. Uh, let's go ahead and see if you guys have any other any other questions here. Um, otherwise, we've got a few other ones that people submitted last night here, and I'll be happy to answer those too. Oh, um, posture. What's the best posture? Oh, and that leads me into the next thing too. Is uh, next week we may do. Uh, I may walk you guys through the best, uh, the, like an ergonomic setup. Okay, because a lot of you guys are working from home now, and you don't exactly have the best ergonomic setup. So what we're gonna do, um, possibly, is go over. I'll go over with you guys what you should be looking for. How high should be? How high should be your uh, chair armrest? How high should your chair be? How high should the desk be? Where should your monitors be? What height? Stuff like that. So we're going to go over that too, most likely next week with you, for you guys. Um, but going back to the original question was, what's the best posture? All right. There is no one best posture. If I sat in the, per even if you sat in the most perfect posture dip for eight hours, guess what? You're going to still have issues. Okay. Our body needs to move. Okay. So you don't want to assume the worst posture you can can uh, assume is the one that you assume for eight hours a day, even if it is considered perfect or textbook. Right? Still puts our body at um, to kind of a high risk still if we assume that for eight hours or any posture. Um, so with that being said, you want to be moving, changing your position frequently throughout the day. All right. So sit. So one pr principle you can use is sit for for an hour. Walk for an hour, sorry, sit for an hour, stand for an hour, and then walk for five or 10 minutes. And just do that in cycles throughout the day, right? Our body needs to move, okay? Um, so you can, you can slouch. You can sit with the best posture. You can sit on one side versus the other, okay? Just keep moving. Keep changing the positionings, okay, with, with, your, with your posture. But it, the gold standard, yes, try and go back to that as much as you can, okay? Um, cause we don't want to be spending more time sitting off one side versus the other. We want to make sure it's balancing out okay? and making sure we're not promoting any asymmetries throughout the body as well. So, um, and we got time for one more question here. Oh, uh, one question I get a lot is, you know, I am, I am like this person was, uh, older and, they were having pain with with working out and they just assume that oh it's just part of the aging process i asked them like how how long have you been dealing with this pain and they're like oh the last 10 years but i just attribute it to old age you know i'm getting old i'm gonna have more pain that's not necessarily the case i know a lot of i know a lot of you know 75 80 year olds that still work out pain free and i know a lot of 20 year olds who work out and have a lot of pain not in just one joint their shoulders their knees their low back right and, you know, that's a 60-year-old 60 60, 60 difference there, 
all right? And there's dramatic changes. So no, just because just because you're getting older does not mean you're you should be having X amount of pain or pain at all, all right? We just need to find ways to allow you to move in a more efficient pattern. Okay, for example, the when I did the squatting over there, um, you know, if I squatted like that, I'd be having knee pain as well, right? So we just need to get get people to move more effectively and efficiently, and in a more biomechanical efficient manner to decrease some of this pain. Okay, and find ways like there's such a large variety of exercises out there. There's no reason you need to be choosing exercises that are painful. Right, you just need to find find somebody that can tailor that tailor a program and find ways to allow you to continue to work out um, without having pain. And that's a, that's another thing I see a lot is um, people are like, yeah, I just stopped working out because I went to my doctor and I told him like it hurts to run. They just told me, oh, well, just don't run anymore. Like that's, I mean, in my opinion, that's so ridiculous, right? Uh, unless there's like a congenital deep rooted issue that has no, there's no way to change the biomechanics of the body or strengthen some muscles, loosen up muscles, or they have a neurological deficit of a stroke or something like that. Most cases, like 99% of the time, it's, you, there's no reason you shouldn't be able to run or get back to running. Okay. If you had some capacity to do that in the past. All right. Um, so don't, that's, if there's one thing that you guys take away from today's, uh, uh, live feed today is, if somebody tells you that you can't, to, if, if you just, if you go and tell somebody you have pain and they just tell you, oh, stop doing it, if you take one thing away from today, don't listen to them, get a second opinion. Go move on until you find somebody that is going to believe in you and show and give you a detailed path of how to get there. And also the track record of doing the same for other people that have proven that they've done the same exact thing for other people that you're dealing with and getting back to running or getting back to working out getting back to hiking, getting back to climbing, stuff like that. Um, Because there's there's such a large um, variety of exercise that we can allow you to continue to keep moving and whatnot in the meantime while we're working you back to to that activity as well. So um, make sure you don't give up on, if if you really have an activity you enjoy and love, don't give up on that activity. There is always a way to get you back to doing that pain-free. But yeah, I'm going to take one last look, see if there's any questions, any other questions. Um, but yeah, I'm not seeing any. So what I'm going to do is, yeah, keep an eye out for next week where we're going to possibly go over ergonomic assessments and, uh, kind of give you guys some guidelines that you guys can apply to your home, uh, workspace as well. Uh, and then what we're doing is we're doing a special today where we're still seeing, uh, patients via telehealth or virtual consults. So for anybody that signs up today or reaches out, um, to get scheduled, we'll get 50% off their first initial uh, consultation with us. So if you're having knee pain, if you're having pain going up and down stairs, if you're having pain with running, if you're having low back pain because you're sitting improperly now that you're at home and don't have an ergonomic assessment or setup, um, reach out, let us know. And that's another thing too is we're happy to do ergonomic assessments uh, individually, individualized for you guys. We've been doing that for quite a few of our patients um, now that they're working from home. Um, but yeah, you guys can reach out uh, to me at Ben Boggy, um, my Facebook, and then you can also find us at Pro Kinetics Physical Therapy and Performance. You can just, can just ser- search us on Google, um, stalk us a little bit, and uh, and um, read our reviews and whatnot too, and uh, see if you guys think we'd be a good fit. Um, but yeah, that'll be good for the next 24 hours, uh, so make sure you don't wait. Uh, but yeah, hope you guys enjoy the rest of your week, and uh, stay safe and uh, healthy out there, and then I will see you guys next week. All right, bye.